Just another brother with another humble question. Just another brother with another humble question. Uh. Welcome to A Brother With Questions. I am your host, B. Period. Man, I appreciate y'all for joining me. Uh, please like, subscribe to the channel. We're going to jump right in here, man. We uh, I've been watching this this interview uh, with, Tulsi, uh, with Tulsi Gabbard on uh, the Tucker, Call, um, Tucker, Tucker Carlson show. Can you talk tonight? But that's okay. <laughs> and, uh, man, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, when when Tulsi Gabbard, I first found out about Tulsi Gabbard. It's been quite a few years now, but the one thing that I that I loved about Tulsi Gabbard is she was always, or she at least appears to always come across as being honest. Uh, when she says what she says, she comes across as if you can believe. It. And so, uh, so when she ran for president. Um, a few years ago now, but uh, but uh, I was uh, she was one of my one of the people I was really checking out because I felt like you know this this particular little lady becomes president. You know what you can get? you can get some honesty out of, it. yeah. So <laughs> you know, and that's more than you can say for a lot of politicians. But uh, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna check out a, a little bit of this interview uh, that she did with uh, Tucker, and uh, let's go. Right now, she's in the middle of a, telling the story about the uh vote when uh president obama was uh trying to go into syria and some of her thoughts on it let's check it out i went in with an open mind saying give me all of the information um i want to make sure that i do my due diligence before i take a position or, or make a decision on this and ultimately uh secretary Kerry came in and briefed us the answers to very direct questions that I had, such as, what is our objective? What, what is your objective in wanting to go and start another war in another country? Uh, what do you, how do you think they will respond? Uh, what will you do next? What is that second, third, fourth order of, of effects and consequences that will always happen? It's interesting, you know, her questions, her questions seem so basic, but a lot of it, you know, you have to look at her background. For those that don't know, uh, she's a war veteran. And so uh, she talks about one of her reasons for running for Congress uh, when she did was because she had served in war. And so she saw she didn't like what, how, how politicians were treating um, the decisions they made. And so she ran as a part of this, uh, correct some of this process. And so here she is sitting on the Foreign Relations Committee, listening to uh, Secretary Kerry and his people talk about this war, potential war in Syria that we were discussing at the time. And I mean, the questions are so simple, but, but check out what our response is. Uh, and the, the, the question, you know, when I said, what is your objective? Uh, I believe it was Secretary Kerry or someone from the State Department who said, well, you know, we don't want to deliver a, a, a de decapitation. We don't want it to be a pinprick. We want this to be a punch in the gut and send a message. And my question was, OK, so a punch in the gut. Like. What will you do when they respond? And they said, well, we don't think they'll re we don't think there'll be a response. <laughs> Like, it's amazing to me that this is the conversation. I mean, we're talking, right, for relations committee. So high level, they're, they're discussing secrets, things that the public doesn't know about. And, and one of the congressmen asks a question, like, what are we going to do over the response? And then the response is, well, then we don't think they'll respond. <laughs> Like, you got to be kidding me, man. This stuff is a joke. Th this is why you know Washington, D.C. is broke. That's your plan? You don't think there will be a response? <laughs> Gary said if that? If somebody came up and punched you in the gut, would you, like, 
just not respond. <laughs> if they don't respond, they've got some pretty, you know, weaponized, powerful friends. Uh, you don't think they'll respond. And what if they don't respond to us, but they respond by attacking some of our friends who may be in the region? All of these different kinds of questions. There's like, well, we just don't think they'll do that. Well, what happens next? Well, you know, we think this will send a strong message. <laughs> I mean, like, I can understand her frustration. I mean, as as just a citizen and listening to her conversation, you're just thinking, no, like, these are supposed to be the, the people who are educated, right, enough to be able to make decisions about whatever that are going to, number one, theoretically right support our position in the world and then number two keep us safe and you know everybody else around us and yet they're going into a briefing and they ultimately have no solutions no they don't share thoughts with the the people who are supposed to sanction this particular action they have no thoughts to their or no no real answers to their questions and, and remember, she at the time she was a Democrat, right? And Democrats were in office at the time. Now this is during President Obama's reign, so you know all his cabinet members are Democratic friendly, whatever that means, right? Because he he appointed them, so they they are on the team. But yeah, the team don't have no answers. God. And and it's the same kind of like political. BS talk that means nothing and is so disconnected from the reality of the people on the ground who have to live with those consequences. And it really surprised me. And maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but it surprised me that after so many years of looking back at the massive mistakes of Iraq, that they could be so glib and just saying, oh, we'll just go drop some bombs and send a message and, and that'll be it. They learned nothing. And that's the thing, because it's not about learning, right? Nobody's learning. We're spending money. We're spending billions and billions and billions of dollars. And we'll just keep spending billions and billions of dollars because the goal is not solutions. The goal is, man, we got to spend this money. Because we all have seen the 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 uh, Monday quarterbacking on Iraq and Afghanistan, and yet here we are. This is 2013 at the time, but here we are, 2013, and we're still like, yeah, that's okay. We got billions. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. These people are a joke. They learned nothing. And so I, I penned an op-ed and uh, published it. And I was I was certainly the first Democrat, maybe the first member of Congress to, to come out in opposition to President Obama's request. And uh, within hours of publishing that op-ed, I got a call from the White House. Uh, and essentially what they said was, how dare you? How dare you go against your president? How dare you go against the president who came from your home state? Not a moment of the conversation. There wasn't much of a conversation, first of all, but they were not interested at all in the reason for my opposition. See, and, and, and that's one of the things that I try and tell people. People like to say, oh, you're, you're a Republican based on the comments that you like to make. And, and I say to people all the time, I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not any of these things. Because both of these people are disingenuous. For all the things that they, that they, that they throw on Republicans and the reasons why as, black, as a black man, I was supposed to hate Republicans. Democrats are doing the exact same thing. And, but, but yet you want to hold them up on some pedestal like, I'm supposed to respect them more than a Republican. Why? They're both playing the same game. 
You know, there's some people talking about the Uniparty. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't done my deep dive on the Uniparty, but my goodness, here's a young woman at the time, because she was early 30s at the time, if I'm not mistaken, who is truly there to, quote unquote, make a difference. I'm here to make a difference for the veterans. And yet, when she didn't go along with the get along, they quickly let her know, listen, you ain't on the team no <laughs> You ain't playing. You ain't doing this right. You need to fix this, and you need to fix this quick, because we got a problem. And if you don't fix this, it's gonna be a big problem for you. Come on, these are the Democrats. These are supposed to be the good guys. <laughs> Give me a break. Which I I stated pretty clearly in the op ed how how well uh, thought out this decision was. It was not made haphazardly. They weren't interested in my experience that I brought that helped inform my decision of having deployed twice to the Middle East before. Uh, and it, it told me a lot about them that they were more uh, concerned with and they cared more about like being a good member of the team and go team Obama and go team Democrats than they were concerned about um, the actual consequences of the very serious request that he was saying he would come to Congress with. And there it is. Team. We need you to do what we want you to do. We don't need you to question it. We don't need you asking too deep questions like, listen, you go ahead and, you know, do your thing so your people know that you ask questions. But listen, at the end of the day, we said we wanted to do it, so I need you to stamp that thing. Stamp that thing. What what y'all want to do? Okay, stamp that thing. What y'all need to do? Okay, stamp that. Thing. Like, come on, man. Th- this is this is why Washington is broken right now, because everybody is just stamping the team. Nobody wants to have a conversation. Nobody wants to truly debate anything. We just stamping for the team, which is why it's broken. It sent a strong message to them as well that I wasn't the person that they thought I was going to be in in someone who could be puppeteered, who could be bullied into just uh, going along with the boss or whatever they had in mind. Uh, That was kind of the beginning of of their realization that, okay, this one thinks for herself and she's not afraid to take a stand. So, I mean, at that point, you know, they have two options. They can either try and crush you. You're a freshman, so it's a little mm-hmm. early for that. And yeah. they've also ginned up the publicity machine on your behalf. You probably weren't even aware of this, but oh. most people come, most congressmen come to Washington. No one ever hears, no one knows they're there. Yeah. Everyone knew you were there. Yeah. So they can try and crush you or they can try and suborn you, bribe you, give you stuff to win you over. Yeah. What did they try? Um. You know, it, it's it is kind of the public things. Like I, I remember, and, and I think you'll get a kick out of this: being invited to the White House Correspondents' Dinner my first year in Congress. Yeah, I had guys who were, who've been in Congress that coming up to me, saying, "Gosh, Tulsi, how come you got invited? I've been here for four terms, eight years, and I still haven't gotten invited to that." These <laughs> would go, man. They are baiting people to get them on the team. There's one more clip that I want to watch. And then, uh, listen, it was a good interview. I actually really enjoyed this interview. Uh, I recommend it that you uh, go see it. Uh, I want to get this one last experience in that she had. The warmonger that Hillary Clinton is. And I knew that would provide me with a platform to have a voice and actually speak the truth to the American people about her record and how dangerous she would be if she were ever our president. And so at the time, what she's talking about is she was vice president, vice chair of the Democratic Party at the time. This is 2016 now. And um, Hillary Clinton's running. Bernie Sanders is running, of course, for the uh, for the nomination. And she comes out and decides that Hillary Clinton is a warmonger. And I refuse to support this. <laughs> so so uh, that was a problem. <laughs> that was a that was a big problem in 2016. How how personal 
um, this was for me because the cost is real. So what happened when you did that? I did. I announced it on Meet the Press on a Sunday morning. Didn't tell anybody I was doing it. No one before I went and, and uh, made that announcement on that show. Monday morning came back to work and a lot of a lot of my Democrat colleagues were basically reading, um, you know, drafting their political eulogies for me. Just like you're done. You're done, Tulsi. Uh, Hillary will be president. You will not get a single dime for your district. Anything that your community needs for your district for my district, not for your campaign, not for me, for my district. They've never given me anything for any of my campaigns and, and I'm totally fine. So that's why I'm going to stop this video, but so check that out. She goes on Meet the Press. This is, like I said, 2016. She decides to endorse Bernie Sanders. This is, of course, at the time where the whole Democratic machine was behind Hillary Clinton becoming president. And for doing so, she goes back to work the next day after Meet the Press. Everybody has written her off to say, listen, you just signed your death. <laughs> like, we know, we know you're here. We, we understand what you did. And hey, man, you stood on your principles, but you can forget about getting money for your district. Like, do, do you understand that? Like, these people are telling her because she did not endorse Hillary Clinton at the time, that she would never be able to get money for her district. The people that she went to Congress to serve are going to get cut off because she didn't endorse the machine. It, it, this, this, this kind of thing, it, it, it just, it, it, it strengthens my my conviction to say, I don't care about these parties. They're playing the same game. Both parties are playing the same game. So you can either get on board with the game or you can think about what your interests are and vote your interests. Because all this other blah, 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 blah that they're giving you is not real. It's just the talking point so that you will join their team and not the other team. So stop focusing on teams because we're in the election year right now. And they're pushing teams right now. They're trying to tell you once again that Donald Trump is a racist. And they're trying to tell you once again that Biden loves whatever. Don't fall for the okie doke. Figure out what your issue is and then really consider who's going to give you the best chance to solve the issue that you care about. Because they're playing the same game. Both of them. As my guy Jason Whitlock would say, the unipart. Right? As, as Royce White would say, the unipart. Alex Jones, I believe, talks about the uniparty too. Uh, they're the same party. So stop...